happy. I'm grateful for that. And I uh, hope you can tune in today. Uh, we're going to be going through some things in the Bible. I uh, give praise and thanks to God for how awesome He is. So if you uh, come on the live today, uh, you're welcome to be here. Uh, I just want to pray for you first and foremost and ask the Lord to move in a might in a uh, in a mighty way. So uh, Father, I thank you, Lord, and I surrender to you today. I ask, Lord, that you would just be with me as I share your word today. I ask, Father, that as we pray, Lord, that prayers will be answered, that great things will take place. And Lord, by your Holy Spirit today, whoever comes on this live today, Lord, I pray that by your Holy Spirit, you would touch them in a mighty way, that you would move in their hearts and their lives if they don't know you. I pray, Father, that you would save them. I pray, Father, for those who do know you on here, that are Christians, I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them, that you would move in their hearts. And Father, I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory for what you're going to do today, Father. All the glory to you. Thank you for using me as a vessel, and I surrender my heart, and I ask that your Holy Spirit fill me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to be going... Um, going on here and we're going to be talking through the bible this is bible study right now so all right so let's start here people always tend to ask me they've been asking me for the past couple months now as i've been coming on here about slavery uh, people always have questions about the physical aspect of slavery and uh, one person asked me about it they were talking and mentioning ephesians chapter 5 so i just wanted to talk a little bit about that today um, I want to make a disclaimer before I start, though. Uh, the Roman Empire at that time condoned slavery. It was a physical aspect, and it was part of the Roman Empire. And today, um, there is still slavery going on today uh, in the form of human trafficking, sadly. Um, I remember there were some things going on down the street from where I lived where someone was caught human trafficking. Uh, we're close to the Mexican border, so there's a lot of people that will do that, and it's sad, you know. If you want to see a really good movie about that, you want to check out Sound of Freedom. It's uh, starring Jim Caviezel, so it's a very good movie about that. Um, you know, and it's sad, yeah. Somebody just gave me spooky vibes, so yeah. It's definitely spooky, and it's terrible what people are doing. As far as um, slavery, it's a terrible thing. So, um, slavery needed to be addressed in the Bible. And the reason why was because one in every four people during the time of Jesus were slaves. Slavery was basically, and it, it was a lot different than it was, you know, during the 1800s. Um, you know, for example, Luke, who was, who wrote the Gospel of Luke, he was a doctor. And people would pay to have their own personal and private doctors. And a lot of people believe that Theopolis uh, was the one who owned Luke. We don't really know for sure if it was um, Theopolis, a person, or Theopolis was a theme of the book of Luke or the book of Acts. But um, what happened there was he was considered a slave because he was purchased by a family and he was a doctor, so it was a little bit different back then because um, if you if you owed a debt, you could pay off your debt by doing that. Your family could pay off a debt by doing that. So it was a little bit different, but there were 60 million slaves during the Roman Empire. You know, people will say on here, and I've heard them say that people, that Jesus condoned slavery, you know, and he was for slavery. When the Bible, especially the New Testament, which is a spiritual book, it's not a carnal book, you know, um, refers to releasing our bondages and escaping slavery from the world and its sinful desires. There's even a book, if you look at, um, you, existing proves God. Okay, praise God. Awesome. So um, there's even a book in the Bible, and it's written about slavery. It's, about, it's a book called Philemon. And if you have a chance to read it, it's only about 23 verses. And the book is addressed to a believer who had a slave in the Bible, and his name was Philemon, and he had a slave named Onesimus. And Paul makes a plea 
to this man about slavery. And Paul pleads with him to say, look, he's not a slave anymore. He's a brother in Christ. You need to welcome him not as a slave, but you need to welcome him as a brother. And Onesimus was a slave that escaped Philemon, and he just so happened to bump into Paul, and then he got saved and he became a believer. So he believed he should go back um, and, you know, and go back and be a part, you know, and try to ask for uh, his own, his forgiveness. So Paul pleaded on behalf of Onesimus because he was going back to Philemon. I want to read some of the verses here. So it says in um, Philemon 8, Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you what you ought to do, in other words, you need to not make him a slave anymore, yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. It is as none other than Paul, an old man and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, that I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly, he was useless to you. Well, he was a slave, but we're talking about the spiritual here. We're not talking about the physical. So, yet I, so he says here that I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I'm sending him who is my very heart. So Paul looks to Onesimus as being his very heart, that he loves him like a Christian brother. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I'm in chains for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent so that any favor you do would be seemed forced but would be voluntary. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was so you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. So people who focus on physical things, you know, and I see here, let's see, that's in the book of Philemon. Um, O'Brien. So, uh, yes, read Leviticus 25, 44 through 46 carefully. That is the law. Um, you are looking at it carnally, which we're going to look at it from a physical perspective today, from a spiritual perspective. We're going to stop looking at things. And what my goal is to try to help each and every one of you to stop looking at things physically. That's the reason why we have racism, we have gender issues, we have all these different things, is we don't look at things from a spiritual standpoint. We look at them from a carnal standpoint. We look at them with a carnal mind. We need to look at it from a spiritual standpoint, from the fact that we are all souls. So people who focus on those physical things, they wind up being carnal. Onesimus was freed to do ministry later on. So Philemon forgave him for running away, and he freed him so that he could work and many other people could come to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And many saved believers, including the denomination that I'm in right now, um, which was very unpopular, our denomination during the time of slavery back in 1860 fought against slavery. And it was very unpopular at the time, but as Christians, we believed that slavery was wrong. And I still believe today that it's wrong. But more important than that today, there's a more, um, there's a more pressing thing, is that, you know, people are caught up in spiritual slavery. You know, they struggle with spiritual things. They struggle with, um, with some different types of slavery that I'm going to focus on, some bondages that you might be facing. And if we understand that we have these things, if we can release those things, it can release a lot of other stuff like bad health. It can release some emotional damages that you might have faced in the past, um, other negative issues. So yes, there is physical bondage. There is bad things that are taking place in this world when it comes to slavery, human trafficking, but right now, many of you on this, on this live, including me, have deeper issues. And we are all slaves. And if you don't know Jesus, you're a slave to sin. 
chained to negative emotions possibly, and controlled by damaged feelings. You know, the few weeks ago I talked about this. I talked about how dangerous the tongue is and how when we use the tongue, we need to use it in a healing manner. We don't want to use it to hurt people. We don't use it to say negative things. You know, and every single week, people come on this channel. They talk about my weight. They talk about my last name. They call me stupid. They say I'm a liar. They say I'm a deceiver. Even one person last week said I was demonic or some other stupidity, which I follow Christ, so you can't have two you can't follow two kingdoms. So every week I need to be prayed up. I need to be confident when I come on here. But let me let you all in on my life a little bit here. When people mock me on here, I don't hold on to it. I honestly could care less what people say here that's negative about me. Because I'm confident in my God. I'm confident in Jesus Christ. And the best part about this, and this has been the great part about all the mockers that come on here, the atheists, the Satanists, and all the people who come on here, they say negative things. I've spent the past few months praying for all of y'all. You know, I'm a blessed man. I have a wonderful life here on the ranch. I have a beautiful wife. I have dogs. I have livestock. And you know why my wife is beautiful? Because she loves Jesus with all her heart. It's, it's great. I have a great job. I have a couple of great jobs. I was just working on, I'm getting ready for school next week. I teach 7th through 12th grade art. And I'm excited about that. I teach art history, I teach graphic design, I teach all these great things. I'm excited to be able to get a new round of students, to be able to teach them and to share stuff, which I teach in a Christian school, because so the best part about it is not only can I teach them about art, I can teach them about the Bible, and I can also teach them about Jesus, and praise God for that. So, But most importantly, I serve an awesome God. I love my Lord Jesus. And when I leave this forum... You know, after we do our Bible studies, I never hold on to what each and every one of you say on here, you know, about me or what's taking place. Actually, my heart breaks when a lot of you say stuff on here, and I wind up praying for a lot of you through the week. So, you know, I desire for each and every person on here to be delivered. Then to get away from those issues that are holding them down. Their bondages, because we're enslaved to things that control us in our life. And I get excited when I see mockers on here, because guess what? And this is just a little disclaimer for you. I used to be you. I used to be a mocker. And the best part about that was I had people that I mocked who went back and they prayed for me. I had people who mocked me and they loved me, despite the fact I was mocking them. And eventually, because of that, they showed me the love of Christ. And God's Holy Spirit opened my heart, and I became a believer. Praise be to God. So I'm excited whenever I see mockers on here. You know, I saw the light after all those people prayed for me, after I mocked them, and after I did terrible things to them and stuff. So Romans chapter 13, verse 12 says, The night is nearly over. The day is is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. My prayer for each and every one of you is that your night is nearly over. The mockers would finally set aside their bondages, that they would seek healing and they would stop being controlled by the demonic, by the forces of this world, by the news and Hollyweird and politics and all those different things. So, so for my fellow believers on here, I desire you as well, because we all have some kind of bondages and things that we can get tied up in. I desire for each and every one of you to release anything that might hold you in bondage as well. I want to encourage us right now. 
For this the work, if you're a Christian, we need to remove ourselves from the center of our own universes. We need to get rid of the selfishness. We need to get rid of all the things that make us selfish, and then we need to place Jesus in the center of our universe. Now, I want to give you some really encouraging and good verses today. And I want you to see the running theme in all these. So here we go. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. It says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors. That's awesome. We are conquerors. You know, it's great to be a conqueror. It's great to be able to pray and see victory. In the book of Joshua, every victory that took place in the book of Joshua was because they placed it in the Lord's hands. The battle belongs to the Lord. It's so funny how we will fight and we will do everything in our power to fix something. And then at the last minute after all that is done and we can't do it, we wind up surrendering it to Jesus and then he finally takes care of it when at the beginning is what we should do. We should lay it at his cross at the beginning and surrender it. So, but it says here, knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors. Now let's listen to the second part here. Through him who loved us. All right. So it says here, knowing all these things, we're more than conquerors. We conquer. Praise be to God. But how do we conquer? Not through our own power, not by what we do, but it says here, through him, through Jesus, who loves us. So, uh, I like you, don't care about your beliefs, just don't be a lying Christian, be a loving Christian. Okay, well, I do love you. And like I said, when the mockers come on here, they do break my heart. So, and I do pray for them, so... Let's continue with the study here, Romans 8, 37. But we notice that when we're conquerors, the reason why we're conquerors is because of the fact we place our faith in Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the one who gives us the victory. Now let's go to the next one here. Let's see here. Because Christians are a spiritual people. So let's see here. I can do all these things... Okay, I can do everything. I can do everything. But then it says, through him who gives me strength. So we can do all things, but we can do them through Jesus Christ. How about uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4? It says, you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them. Because the one who is greater in you is greater than the one who is in the world. So praise be to Jesus. But you see the pattern here? There's a pattern. If we want to be conquerors, if we want to do great things, if we want to overcome, then the way that we do it is by surrendering it to Jesus. That's how we do it. So be encouraged by that. You don't have to fight the battles. There's a scripture in the Bible it says, be still and know that I am God. But I love that scripture because of the fact that it's the be still part. If you read it in the Hebrew, the Hebrew says, hands off and know that I'm God. In other words, step away from it. Step away from the problem. Step away from the issue. If there's something that you're facing today, some kind of struggle, something that you're going through, Step away from it and allow Jesus and surrender it to Jesus and allow him to handle the problem. That's the beautiful part about Jesus is that the battle belongs to him. It doesn't belong to us. And I always surrender what's happening to people. Why is God letting kids get cancer, getting shot at school and I say by the church? Um, the reason why those things are happening is because of the fact that there are people in the world who don't follow Jesus and the people who don't follow Jesus wind up shooting people or doing bad things which is sad so that's the the the, the school part and cancer is basically you have good cells in your body and those good cells turn into bad cells and that's sad that children get cancer it's a horrible thing and I pray for children who get cancer and um, the 
But the reason why is because we've, we're living in a fallen world. We live in a sinful world. Sin came into the world. But a lot of people say that God gave them cancer, which God never gives anybody cancer. You know, God doesn't push people to shoot people at schools. But about, let's see, about four, about three weeks ago, we were talking about the power of the tongue. And we were talking about James chapter 3. So if you want to go back, uh, Julio Gonzalez, if you want to go back and you want to read that, that would be awesome. Um, but in James chapter 3, it talks about the power of the tongue is set on fire by hell. And we talked about how your tongue has life and death in it. And I focused on some of the people who did mass school shootings. And we talked about that. And Dylan Harris, or Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, I read some of their writings on that, on that live. And a lot of the reason why they did the things that they did was because they were picked on, because they were pushed by other kids, and because of the fact that they, their, their self-esteem was low. You know, these terrible things took place because of that. And we need to be careful with our tongues. We need to be careful because maybe your tongue and what you say can stop a mass shooting. Maybe by helping somebody, our tongue, if we use it in a positive way, might be able to stop a suicide. But, you know, you could check that out. That was on the live about three weeks ago. So praise be to God. It's on, our, it's on my YouTube page if you want to watch the whole thing. It's called What's More Dangerous Than Guns. We need more, we need more less gun control than we need more tongue control. So, um, but let's do another scripture here. First Peter chapter two, verse nine says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation a people for God's own possession to proclaim the virtues of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light because we're fearfully and wonderfully made. We're beautiful, wonderful people in the eyes of Jesus. He makes us that way. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. You know, many of us get caught up in being in bondage. We get caught up in, we get enslaved in the culture, in Hollywood, in the news. We get caught up in politics. I see people all the time here asking me about politics and I'm not really a political person. As a leader, as a leader in the church, I'm somebody who um, doesn't like to have a political opinion. I just pray and the Lord gives, you know, I'm like, which one, which person is following the word of God the most when it comes to their, their policies and when it comes to the things that they do. So. But people get caught up in all those things, and then they get caught up in personal things and what other people do to us. So we can hold on to offenses for many years. Someone might say something to us, and, you know, John Bevere called offenses the bait of Satan. You know, the most reasons why, and I see people leave churches, is because of the fact that they're offended by something. The problem is after they leave, they don't let go of those offenses. And we need to let go of those things. Those things can cause unforgiveness, you know, bitterness. And all those things can cause health issues. They can cause, they can cause cancer. We were just talking about cancer. You know, one of the cancer doctors I was talking to a few years ago said that one of the main things that cause cancer is stress. You know, and other infirmities are caused by, you know, having stress on our bodies and, and holding on to, to things like anger and unforgiveness and bitterness. And, you know, we need to let those things go. And if you're a Christian, you need to surrender those things to Jesus Christ. And I can guarantee the majority of the people who came here tonight to prayer and Bible study are probably enslaved in some kind of bondage. You know, either to something or to someone. Because the Bible says that, you know, we can only have one master. And Jesus is my master. But we can, if we're not being mastered by Jesus, then what are we being mastered by? Because we are 
a people who want to be mastered. We are a people that want to have a leader. We want to follow something or someone that's higher than us. And in our case, in my case, of course, and in many Christians' cases, it's following Jesus Christ. He is God, and we follow him, and we surrender to him. But I'm looking to you, Christian, today to give up those things, unforgiveness, bitterness. You know, I don't want people to have health issues due to the fact that they're holding on to jealousy and they're holding on to the fruits of the spirit that we talk, or the... the um, the carnal nature we talked about yeah, last year, last week in uh, Galatians chapter 5. So, but we hold on to these offenses for years. So, when you say we, we mean, you mean you. Well, yeah, I'm going to put myself in that category too, but I can guarantee that there's something that you're holding on to, some kind of thing that happened in your past, or maybe even something that we don't even remember. Something that affected us and caused us to go a certain route in our lives. So, but we need to release those things. And the best part, believers, is that if we are holding on to something, we don't even realize that we're doing it, we can pray and the Lord can reveal it to us, which is pretty awesome. So, Proverbs chapter 19, or 19 verse 11 says this, A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. So if someone offends us, we need to overlook those things. You know, part of what I do in this life um, is a healing ministry. Um, I don't do the... <laughs> when people hear healing ministry sometimes, they, they think about those people on television and the, the people are throwing their wheelchairs on the stage and they're like, you're healed, you're healed. And, and that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, I'm not talking about that. So um, what I do is I pray and I desire people to get healed of addictions, of lusts, of discord, of all different types of emotional issues. You know, that's why, and I've been doing this for years. I've been praying about it for years. I've been praying for people for years. Um, I wrote a book about trying to help people with their healing, a uh, 365 day devotional. It's called God's Mess, a messy devotional. It's on godsmess.com, godsmesses.com. Shameless plug there. Uh, so if you can't afford it, let me know. There are free devotionals available on there as well for you to read and to pray about. But I try to challenge people in those devotionals. I try to challenge them so that they can so that the lord will pull something out of them that they can surrender that they might see something in there that they've never seen before in themselves you know because the lord wants to circumcise those things out of us he wants to cut those things out of us so i want people to get healed of addiction i want people to get healed of lust or discord or you know like i said any other emotional issues that they might be facing insecurities you know whatever because I truly believe this, and from studying the scriptures, our physical, our spiritual, and our emotional health can all stem from offense and being in bondage to the offenses that we have in our lives. By holding on to them, the individual can become a slave to them. So in other words, if someone says something to me and I'm just holding on to it, and I'm just angry about it. And I know people who've done that for years. They don't talk to family members. They can't let it go. And I've seen this. And they become in bondage to that person because they're holding on to those things. And that person's basically controlled them and put them in a place where they're in bondage. Um, I used to work with I used to do ministry on South Street in Philadelphia, and I worked with a lot of cults up there. Uh, I talked about the hidden truth last week, about how I would bump into the hidden truth, and I would talk to them, and they, they believe that everyone, who's not, everyone who is not, um, not a white person is going to heaven. 
And then I would bump into these people that were that were um, Aryan nations, they were called. And they believed that everyone who was of color wasn't going to heaven, which is sad. Both of them are wrong because everyone can go to heaven based upon who they proclaim as Lord. If they proclaim Jesus as Lord, they can go to heaven. But I saw these people that, that held hatred towards other people. And I would see them for several years, and I saw what it did to them. They got more pale. They were sick more often. I'd see them, and where were you? I was really sick. I was going through this, or I was going through that. You know, and I would say, okay, well, you know, Jesus is still here if you want to proclaim him as Lord and get that hatred out of your heart. You know, but the thing is, is that if you hold on to those things, I like to use this. I, I did this with a with a children's class. I showed um, Emperor Palpatine before in Star Wars, before he went to the dark side and then after he went to the dark side. And how much it affected his life physically, it damaged him physically. Same with Darth Vader if you're a Star Wars fan. You know, look at what happens to them. They gradually, through evil and through darkness... They wind up getting uglier and uglier and uglier. And it's a terrible thing when we hold on to those things. We hold on to those grudges or we hold on to, to those things. So, quoting fiction makes complete sense when talking about Jesus. Yeah, because of the fact that, see, Jesus, what he talked about was um, when we want to teach people about something, we need to bring in something that they can understand culturally. Jesus would do that. He'd say, the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net. The kingdom of heaven is like this, or the kingdom of heaven is like that. So in this case, I was using Star Wars to be able to teach people about what things would look like. So, yeah, and Star Wars isn't real, I understand, but Jesus is real. So that's a cool thing. So, um, But yeah, I use that as a cultural thing to bridge the gap between that time and today. So... But our physical, spiritual, and emotional health can all stem from offense, can all stem from holding on to anger, from holding on to, to, to hatred, by holding on to, to um, bitterness. You know? And if you're holding on to those things, whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, these are things that you need to let go of. These are things that you need to release because you don't want to be in bondage to other people. You don't want to be enslaved by what somebody says about you. You know, those people did that. There were people that hap that happened to for years. We talked about the tongue a couple weeks ago. You had um, people like, oh, that's Mad Mike. That's Mad Mike. And they're like, hey, Mad Mike. And he's a little kid. Mad Mike, Mad Mike. And guess what happens? He grows up and he becomes Mad Mike. So we need to be careful what we're saying more is caught than taught in our lives. So, praise be to God. So, there are those on here, on TikTok, and they've been on my live, that are so offended by Jesus, they've actually made it their life's work to attack believers of faith. You know, I've seen some of them on here, they're angry they're resentful. They're insecure and they're over-emotional and they're struggling. And I'm not saying that to bust on them. I'm not saying that it's a, you know, that to, to, to treat them bad. Because I, I get over-emotional sometimes. And, you know, but the problem is, is that they're so angry with Jesus. There's a guy on, that I listen to his podcast and he's an atheist. He talks more about Jesus than most Christians do. But he talks about it because he's so angry with God. And I'm just like, you don't even believe in God and you're angry with him. But there's people on here, they're so offended by Jesus. And they're so offended and they're so, they're holding on to these horrible things and you need to let go of those things. I'd be so bold to say that is the case in other people's lives on here. You know, they're in bondage. They're spiritually enslaved. I've been talking for weeks about the tongue. It causes life and causes death. What we say can hurt or heal people. And, and there are people on here now that had a life shift when someone hurt them. 
There are people on here right now, and I, I want to pray for this real quick. You've been hurt by somebody. Someone has said something to you. They've called you names. Maybe in school. Maybe a family member even. Someone close to you who you love has said something terrible to you. And I just want to pray, Lord, I pray for each and every person on here, Lord, who has experienced that type of hurt. If they're holding on to bitterness, if they're holding on to anger, if they're holding on to whatever it may be, Father, I pray that you would give them the strength to release those things. I know many people on here who don't know you. The reason why they don't know you, Father, is because of the fact they're holding on to those things and those things are stopping them from moving forward in you. I pray that you would touch their hearts, that you would help them to see Jesus as Lord and Savior, but also, Lord, that you would heal them. That you would help them remove anger, to remove resentment, to remove bitterness, to remove all those things. And Father, I give you praise for that. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll praise God. I love Jesus. Jesus Christ, the prophet of Allah, not God himself. Oh, so Jesus is a prophet? Okay, yeah, Jesus is a prophet. Okay, well, prophets, in order to be a prophet, you have to say, you have to prophesy and say things that are correct, right? Hmm. Okay, so if Jesus is a prophet, let me, let me think about some of the things Jesus said. I and the Father are one. Ooh, that was a prophecy that he made. So, I and the Father are one. So he said, him and God are one and the same. He said, before Abraham was, I am. <gasps> okay, so he prophesied that before Abraham was, he was there. He was, he was there, that he's God. Wow. So if you, if you want to be a prophet, the, the, the part about being a prophet is you have to be correct in what you're saying. You, you can't just false prophesy. If you're a false prophet, then you're basically not speaking the truth. So that's the best part. If you believe that Jesus is a prophet, and I know Muslim, I have Muslim friends that believe Jesus is a prophet, and I give them those scriptures. And he says that he's God. So he prophesied that he's God, therefore he must be God. So praise be to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is God. Awesome. Thank you, Lord. So people on here have had a life shift uh, when someone hurt them. Something happened in their lives. They got hurt. It led them to have bitterness. It led them to have anger, resentment, and other negative feelings. Uh, it caused them to be trapped in bondage and controlled by what someone might have said to them. So, I want to go through those scriptures one more time with you and just, you know, for the believers here, and I want to talk to you about that. So, Romans, or Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It says here, I can do all things. Okay, I can do all things. Great, I can do everything. But then it says, through him who gives me strength. So I can do all things, but I can't do it on my own. We have to do it through Jesus. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome. Because the one who is in you, Jesus, is greater than the one who is in the world. So 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. So I'm glad you believe that Jesus is God now. That's awesome. So I see that right there. Bingo. You believe that Jesus is God. Awesome. Cool. Great, great. How about uh, 1 Peter 2.9? But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, to proclaim the virtues of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we're chosen. We're a royal priesthood. We're a holy nation. But why is that? Because Jesus called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Praise be to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Believer, I encourage you today. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are beautiful and you are chosen. You are sealed with his promise, like it says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. 
he seals you with his promise of the Holy Spirit. Then Romans chapter 8, verses 10 through 11 says that he resurrects us one day. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also raise us from the dead. Praise be to God. Thank you so much for that, Jesus. Children, we're children of the King, and we serve in his kingdom. You are a prince, and you are a princess. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. But here's the problem. And you need to be confident in how you stand in Christ. It'll stop anything from happening. It's a, if people identified in Christ, it would stop all these identity issues that people are having. If we identified with Christ and how he sees us, it would probably, if people did that, it would end suicide. People would not want to kill themselves anymore because they would see themselves as who they truly are in Jesus Christ. It would fix a lot of issues in this world, praise be to God. But this is the reason why it doesn't happen, because every kingdom has enemies. And these enemies are people who are in bondage to demonic forces. Therefore, they're not our enemies. The demons and the devil who cause them to be in bondage make us make them our enemies so we can't look at people as being our enemies the bible says we love our enemies and we pray for those who persecute us praise be to god so if we took the timber out of our eyes before worrying about the silvers in the other's eyes it would help so okay i don't believe that that's the scripture about timber and sliver oh slivers okay gotcha okay i thought it said silver for a minute i was like that's really interesting but yeah that's one of my favorite scriptures yeah if we if we're pointing at somebody when we're pointing and we're saying something about them we've got about we got a few fingers pointing back at us so that's always a good thing too so two weeks ago i talked about that there were two kingdoms we either belong to the kingdom of christ or we belong to the kingdom of darkness people in darkness will either be attracted or they'll be repelled by the light of Jesus Christ. And Jesus wanted to encourage us. And this is to the believer. He says in John chapter 15, verse 18, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. There will be people in our lives who want to steal our joy. But why do they do that? Because... They're in bondage and enslaved in their own sins, in their own emotions, in their own struggles. And we need to pray that they get released from those things. We need to pray we get the people get released from the demonic things that hold them back. We should desire for people to have the freedom. And freedom starts through Jesus Christ. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 through 18, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Thank you, Lord. I love that song, too. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Praise God. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with an ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So, tell us how this applies to your life so we can learn, not how you think it applies to us. Okay, wandering soul, do you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior? I'm thinking you're a wandering soul, so possibly not. I'm just going to go with that right now since you're not answering at this point. I know Jesus. Do you? Yes, I do. I do know Jesus. Um, I'm not talking about do you know him? Do you know him personally? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? That's okay. That's okay. Takes a little to type sometimes. Yes, I have a personal relationship. Awesome. Awesome. So, I learned years ago, and this is something I learned. Um, when I was at a, I was at a John Bevere service, 
And the Lord showed me something that was pretty amazing. It says in Isaiah that Isaiah realized that he was, you know, he was not, he didn't have anything special about him, that he was sinful, that he, he had some horrible things in his life that he struggled with. And the Lord said, and then the Lord basically said to him, you know, I need you to go for me. And I raised my hands at that point and I said, here I am, send me. And what we need to do in this life is whenever we come across a problem where we see bitterness, and if we don't see it, then what we need to do is we need to pray that he reveals it. Um, yeah, so thank you for sharing. Love you, brother. Let me finish, though. We need to pray that the Lord reveals things in our lives, our struggles, whatever we're facing. And he's going to do that. He's going to confirm that for us. After we do that, the next thing we do is we surrender. The Bible says in James, we draw near to God and he draws near to us. We surrender to him. We surrender it and say, because we can't get rid of it ourselves. That's why New Year's resolutions never work. You know, people, you know, well, I'll give up this for, you know, and then like a week later, they're smoking again, or a week later, they're drinking soda again, or a week later, they're cursing again. But the reason why is because we need to be delivered from it. You know, and the way to be delivered is we can't do it on our own. Everywhere it says that you can't give up these things is all passive. It's all in the passive. It means you can't do it. I can't do it. You can't. No counselor can do it. Psychology teaches that we can do it ourselves when we can't. But we need to surrender it to Jesus and allow him to fix it. So that is how you can do that. So the whole book that I wrote, the devotional, it's all about surrendering your problems, your issues, whatever the Lord is, because the goal is to become more like Jesus. The goal is to remove the things in our lives that are holding us back from being closer to Jesus. So praise be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So passive or past, they mean very different things. So um, passive means that in, in the sense that we can't do it on our own, and it's not something that we can do. And the passive word means that it's only something that we can do, that we can surrender and Christ can do for us. That's what it means by being passive. You know, because we, that's the problem is that we try to fix our own problems. We try to fix our own struggles. We try to do those things. And yeah, we need to step out of the boat sometimes. Like I can't just sit around if I don't have a job and say, okay, I'm going to go, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm just going to sit here until you give me a job, Lord. You can't do that. But in the sense of like any issue, any struggle, anything that we're facing. So we're talking about the Greek and the Hebrew. So not according to Webster's Dictionary or the Oxford Dictionary. So, you know, but praise be to God for that. So, all right, cool. Thank you, Amanda the Great. <laughs> That's awesome. Amanda the Great. So cool. Um, let me read this scripture again. Now the Lord is a spirit, and when the spirit of the Lord is... There is freedom. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So we are the unveiled. That means that unsaved people, they're veiled. They can't see. You know, they're walking in darkness. The people, there are people on here. Um, and I'm grateful that you're on here every week, um, that you don't know Jesus, that the Bible says that you're blind and you can't see, you know, that you're walking in darkness. But we have freedom, believers. We must pray for the people that are in the darkness. We must pray that the Lord will reveal the bondages of sin in believers and non-believers' lives, that they start a revolt and they turn away from their oppressors. You know, that the people who are caught up in demonic forces and demonic things are pulled away from the oppressor, the devil and his demons. So, all Latin origin, no Greek like you're saying. Okay. All right, well, thank you. I'm glad Amanda the Great on here is a theologian and she can help us with this today. That's awesome. Why are you lying to people? I'm not lying to people, Amanda the Great. Amanda, do you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Amanda, 
No, just an entomologist. Oh, good. I'm glad that you're an entomologist. Thank you for what you do. Praise be to God. Well, um, it says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of the God. Um, Romans 3.10 says, there's no one good, no, not one. But the great part is, is that Romans 10.9 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So um, I'm inviting you today to proclaim Jesus as Lord, to accept him into your life. And not only will you be an etymogist, I'm sorry, I'm not good at pronouncing things, you know. I'm one of those uh, people who don't who struggle with $25 words. So, but yeah, if you um, accept Jesus and proclaim him as Lord, you know, it'll help you. Uh, the, I was about to mention the song Amazing Grace. Uh, it says, I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind but now I see that's the goal to see to be to remove the veil to not be in the darkness anymore to walk in the light so praise be to God um, Amanda I'm gonna be praying for you this week thank you Jesus I'm gonna be praying I always pray I have a nice day. I'm out. I just couldn't stand you using the wrong words. Okay, Amanda, um, I hope you have an excellent week. God bless you. And I uh, hope you have an awesome week. And I uh, pray that you get saved. So thank you for coming today. So as we close today, I want you to remember this. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14 says, If you are insulted because of the name of Christ... You are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, James 1.19. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Hello, Veronica Kitty. Nice to see you. So, great to see you back. Um, and then, of course, these are things that we need to be doing. We need to be sl quick to listen in our lives. We should be slow to speak and slow to become angry. Um, James 1.12 says this, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Thank you, Lord, for that. So as we go today, I want to encourage you, be strong in the faith. Be courageous, believers. Some of those scriptures that we went through today, um, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We are more than conquerors through him who loves us. You know, We are princes, we are princesses. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. I hope that we stand in those things today because I want you to be released of bondage. I don't want people to be stuck and enslaved by someone else where someone says something to them and they hold on to it for years or they hold on to it for days and they get stuck and they can't get rid of it. You know, someone might cut us off in traffic and that could be that simple. They cut us off in traffic and they say something to us. So for a couple of days, we might hold on to that, which can cause a chain reaction. You know, all these people, we cause a chain reaction and we could wind up, um, we could wind up hurting somebody by what we say because we're upset by what they said to us. But we need to stand in the confidence of who we are in Jesus. And as we do that, and people will mock, and people will say bad things, and people will call us names, and people will do things to us because we love Jesus, then we can stand in the confidence in knowing that we stand in Christ. We stand in who He is, and we love Him. And we don't have to worry about those things. So if you're holding on to any bitterness, I pray for you. If you're holding on to any anger, if you're holding on to any jealousy, or if you're holding on to any lust in your life, I pray that you 
will have those things released. That the Lord will help you release those things. Confidence is rooted in verifiable knowledge. Actually, confidence, you know, your confidence can be shaken if someone, if you're, if you're insecure, or if you have someone who says something to you and you hold on to that, which a lot of us have hold, held on to those things for years. And I'm just on here helping to ask people to let those things go. You can't verify your claims. I can with the Bible, but I see that you're an atheist and you probably wouldn't believe and want to hear that. So, But I definitely will be praying for you, Burnt Church Atheist um, 2.0. Um, actually, I want to pray for you right now. Lord, I pray for Burnt Church Atheist 2.0, Lord, and ask Father um, that you would help him to be able to see you and to know you. I ask that you proclaim, help him to proclaim you as Jesus and help him to proclaim you as Lord. Father, would you do that? Would you work in his heart? Would you work in his life? Would you help him to see you as Lord and Savior, Father? And as I continue to pray for him, Lord, that you would work in his heart and that you would work in his life. Father, I'm, I was a former atheist. You know that, Father, and you continue to have people pray for me. So I pray that other people will pray for him as well so that he will come to know you as Lord and Savior. And as he does that, Lord, I pray, Father, that you would move mightily in his heart. I praise you for that, and I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Jesus loves you, Burnt Church Atheist 2.0. So, and he wants you to proclaim him as Lord and Savior. So, um, before we go today, if you're holding on to any of those things, if you don't realize you're holding on to any of those things, and you need the Lord to reveal them, the Lord can circumcise those things from our life. The Lord can remove those things from our hearts. So, we'll pray today. So we'll pray today that you'll be able to have those things removed. So let me pray for you right now. And if you want something released from your life right now, I pray you raise your hands up and that you surrender them to Jesus. So praise be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I praise you, Father, that you're an awesome God. I ask, Lord, for each person on here, Lord, whether they be a believer or not, Lord Jesus, if there is something holding them back, Father, if there's a bondage that they've received, that they're enslaved to bitterness, if they're enslaved to unforgiveness, to some kind of anger that they're going through, Father, whatever it might be emotionally, Father, I pray, Lord, that you would reveal it to them and you would help them to surrender those things, Father. Would you do that for me, Lord? Would you help them to surrender so that they can move forward in healing? That you would heal them, that you would touch their bodies, that you would touch their hearts, and you would touch their spirits. And Father, that you would move in a mighty way, Father God, as we all surrender these things to you today, Lord, I pray that you would lay them at your cross and that you would release us from those painful things. And Father, I thank you for that. I give you praise for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. Praise be to God. So, okay. No, uh, we actually, the reason why we pray for people, it has nothing to do with consent. It has to do with love. You know, that is a way, and even my atheist friends understand that. You know, when I tell my atheist friends that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for them, uh, they know that I'm doing it because I love them. So, praise be to God for that. That's an awesome thing. So, I do want to say uh, thank you so much for joining today. I, I do appreciate you all coming out. Um, as you do that, I, I pray, Lord, as, as, as these things get released in your life, these bondages that you might be holding on to, um, it'll change your attitude. It'll help boost your, you know, remove your insecurities. It'll help you to be stronger, to be more courageous. And while you're doing that, read those scriptures that we talked about, Romans 8.37, Philippians 4.13, let me see the other ones that I read today. You know, some of the ones that First Peter two nine, First John four four. So, you know, I don't let anyone join the live who's named erotica. So the Bible says that um, I will make it in my heart not to look lustfully at a woman in Job, and you know, I'm not into erotica. The word um, pornography in the Bible is the word porneos. Um, it means to drag everyone down to, to destruction. And um, 
the bad part about that, and this is the terrible part about it, is that um, it's the name that they use for the devil. The devil is the evil one, the poor Naos. So, you know, but yeah, I, I don't let anybody on the live here because of the fact that they probably could do something or say something that would be that would affect or you know hurt other people on here um, my goal here is to preach the word of god my goal here is to pray for people to pray for healing in people's lives so and i do apologize for pronouncing your name aisha either i'll i'll ask my wife she's my wife is a spanish so i will ask her what E-R-O-T-I-C-A, how it's pronounced in Spanish or in your sense in Cuban. Um, did you come from Cuba? I have to ask that. Because I went to Cuba in 2010. I taught marriage seminars. Their divorce rate is 72% there. So, um, I, yeah, I actually, I actually went to Cuba in uh, 2010, and I love the people there. The people there are beautiful people. So especially the ones in Old Havana, um, on the, in, the um, in several other areas too. Pinar del Rio was a beautiful place, uh, just wonderful. I love, I love that. Well, God bless your grandparents. You know, I, I'm just, you know, I loved being in Cuba. I hope to get back there someday. I made some good friends there. Um, you know, there are, a lot of them are open to hearing the gospel, even if they don't know Jesus. Um, I've met a lot of atheists there who are open to hearing what I had to tell them. So I praise God. They're just wonderful people there. I love, I love the people of Cuba. Um, so I'm grateful for them. And, uh, you know, sorry again for mispronouncing your name. And uh, before I go, let me just go through the um, comments here, see if there's anything I need to address before we go. All right. Let's see here. Veronica Kitty, it's so great for you to see you again. Thank you for joining us again. Um, sorry that we joined a little late. Uh, I do have a YouTube page if you want to check it out. Um, it's on. It's connected to my TikTok. So, and I usually will post these on my YouTube page after we're done. Uh, also, I posted. There's a really good section called "When Mockers Attack." I worked on that. Um, I had somebody really attack me last week. It was terrible. So, I give step by step on what to do as a Christian when mockers attack us on there, which is praise God is an awesome thing. So. But uh, thank you again for tuning in. Uh, I do appreciate that. Bye, uh, Burnt Church Atheist. I'll be praying for you this week. I hope you tune in next week for more Bible study. And I uh, hope you all have a blessed rest of your day. Praise be to God.